Hello and welcome back to Tutoring with Gavin. In this video, I'll be exploring the character of Iago from the play Othello by William Shakespeare. Iago is probably Shakespeare's most complex villain, a twisted and vengeful man who is talented and charismatic, and who makes the audience complicit in his despicable behaviour. Interestingly, Iago is the third largest role written by Shakespeare, longer than the protagonist Othello, behind only Richard III and Hamlet. Just like Richard III, Iago provides a textured portrait of human nature through a deeply flawed but unique character. There are many hints early in the play that Iago is frustrated by Othello's inability to recognise his talents in rhetoric and strategy. It is as if he spends the next two hours on stage proving this point, employing his linguistic talent that allows him to manipulate all the other characters around him like a skilled puppeteer. So what motivates Iago to carry on such cruelty and subterfuge? He is overlooked by Othello for the role of lieutenant, which may have triggered his hatred for the Moor, and yet the apparent pleasure he takes in going about the task of destroying Othello seems to come from a combination of factors. Iago has a natural affinity to lying, and does it with such conviction, sharing these moments with his audience as if to say, I told you so. He creates fake news, like a chess master, laying down the foundations for each move he has planned. His openness with the audience makes him equally as honest as he is false. I am not what I am. Iago believes he has been wronged twice. He has heard rumours that Othello has had an affair with his wife, Amelia, while Othello has promoted Cassio over him. It's not clear which angers him most. In Act 1 he states clearly, I hate the more. Just like other close advisers who have been cast adrift, Iago now wants revenge. His pride is hurt and he's obsessively driven to repair his own damaged ego. While there is no evidence of an affair between Amelia and Othello, it's the knowledge that others might believe this that perhaps angers him so much. It is thought abroad that twixt my sheets he hath done my office. Done my office is clearly a euphemism for having sex with his wife. Shakespeare used a variety of playful euphemisms in his plays to avoid the Puritan censors of the time. Iago also suggests that Cassio has had an affair with Amelia. This is obsessive jealousy, but his focus of hatred is for Othello. In Act 2 he says, For that I do suspect the lusty moor hath leapt into my seat. The thought thereof doth like a poisonous mineral gnaw my innards, and nothing can or shall content my soul till I am evened with him, wife for wife. Or put the moor at least into a jealousy so strong that judgment cannot cure. Leapt into my seat suggests an eagerness on the part of Othello to have sex with his wife. But the phrase wife for wife implies that Iago wants to have sex with Desdemona as revenge. This would not be out of passion or love for her, but simply to punish Othello, and reveals a contempt for women. This is reflected in the crude innuendos he uses throughout the play, showing that his mind is corrupted by sexual jealousy. His misogynistic comments are full of animalistic images of body parts and lust. Talking of Desdemona in Act 2, he says, Her eye must be fed. This extended sexual metaphor of gluttonous feeding reduces Othello's marriage to simply animalistic lust. In Act 3, Amelia addresses this directly, saying that all men are all but stomachs, and we are all but food. This suggests that there is little love in her marriage to Iago, and that women, in her own experience, only serve to satisfy their husband's constant sexual appetite. Iago's misogyny is perhaps Shakespeare's way of showing how fragile men can be when their power is threatened in any way. Iago has been cuckolded and overlooked in his military career and his pride is hurt. This crisis of control leads to Iago's hatred of those men around him who seem comfortable in their own skin and a disdain for the women who he would have seen as prizes for success and power. After all, Desdemona is from a wealthy family and Othello would eventually gain from this. When Iago uses the metaphor of the green-eyed monster, it ironically applies to himself and yet he wishes to infect Othello with the same disease that has infected himself. Beware, my lord of jealousy, it is the green-eyed monster which doth mock the meat it feeds on. Here, Othello and Iago are the meat being consumed by jealousy, demonstrating a reversal of power. Iago knows that his best chance of revenge is if he sticks close to Othello. I follow him to serve my turn upon him. His intention is to stay close so that he can destroy Othello from within the trusted circle of advisers. This is in line with the famous proverb, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. 
If you hope to bring someone down, you have to know them well and be ready to use their weaknesses against them. Very Machiavellian. He knows that Othello's love for Desdemona and his underlying insecurity as a Moor in Venice is the general's Achilles' heel. Iago's plan is to bring down Cassio and Othello. With as little a web as this will I ensnare as great a fly as Cassio. His repeated use of animal imagery captures his disdain for Othello and his own inflated ego. Dramatic irony is used masterfully by Shakespeare to create suspense and a strange sense of complicity for the audience, who look on helplessly as Iago builds his web of deceit. It has been argued by some that Iago is evil or a psychopath, but how does someone like that gain the trust and influence of so many people? The jealousy that he plants inside of Othello, which overwhelms and consumes the general, leading to murder, is evidence enough of how powerful jealousy is when influencing the behaviour of those who have functioned perfectly well beforehand. This play is about jealousy and how it consumes Othello, Iago and Rodrigo. However, this jealousy is complicated with another malignant influence, racism. Iago uses race when talking to Rodrigo and Brabantio, but never with the audience, when he is at his most honest. It's as if he ingratiates himself with those he knows to be racist by making his dislike of Othello about his race. He says to Desdemona's father, Even now, now, very now, an old black ram is tupping your white ewe. Again, animal imagery is used by Shakespeare to show how inhuman Iago is and how little he thinks of women. The dramatic repetition of now provides the audience with a sense that Othello is having sex with Desdemona at that very moment. There is also the question of whether Iago is motivated by his love for Othello, perhaps hiding an unrequited love. In Act 3, he tells Othello, You know I love thee, and later, I am your own forever. This second quote echoes a marriage vow and suggests a deep commitment from Iago that has been betrayed by Othello's new love, Cassio. Iago certainly entertains homoerotic fantasies. I lay with Cassio lately, and then, sir, would he gripe and wring my hand, cry, O oh, sweet creature, and then kiss me hard, as if he plucked up kisses by the roots that grew upon my lips, then laid his leg over my thigh and sigh and kiss. This may be just to convince Othello that Cassio is reliving his affair with Desdemona in his sleep, but it could be Shakespeare's way of raising this as the true cause of his jealousy. Notwithstanding, the thing that makes Iago stand out as a memorable villain is his enjoyment of being bad. He amuses himself and bathes in his Machiavellian cunning. Not poppy, nor mandragora, nor all the drowsy syrups of the world shall ever medicine to that sweet sleep which thou owedst yesterday. He boasts that he has changed Othello forever and he loves the sense of power that gives him. And yet he leaves the play in mystery with the words, demand me nothing. What you know, you know. From this time forth, I never will speak word. It suggests that he will never reveal the true motivation for his actions to anyone other than the audience. But you could also see this as Shakespeare showing a lack of remorse in Iago, who to some extent is still in control, gloating over the chaos he has created. Shakespeare shows here that wickedness exists, often triggered by complex emotions that are difficult to control. Human frailty and all its flaws are why we find this character so captivating. Well, I hope this has helped you in your understanding of the play. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel so that I can continue to make these free videos for students. Until next time.